direction. Okay, go. Uh, instructor Gaynor again speaking from Harrisburg Area Community College. Our next lesson concerning categorical syllogisms uh, will be an explanation of what's sometimes called the rules method for testing syllogisms for validity. This is sort of a good thing for you people who are good at memorizing but may have had some uh, issues getting the diagram straight. Uh, every single syllogism, if it's valid, will pass these rules. Now, there are technically three rules, although those three rules can be broken down into further rules that are implied by the other ones. So I'm going to start out by uh, talking about, well, no, I should say four rules, but anyway, here's one of them. This is, this is really not a rule, this is just something you have to keep in mind. Every syllogism will will have three terms. Remember, terms are categories of cl or classes of things, so we'll be relating three terms, each used twice, but not in the same premise. Now, let's say in one of our arguments, Two, uh, two of our, or one of our terms looks like it's the same throughout, but it's really not. And it really turns out that there are four terms rather than three terms. That actually commits what is sometimes called the fallacy of four terms. Remember, a valid categorical syllogism is three terms. So if you find out that, that in one case the terms aren't exactly identical, it won't be a valid syllogism. Technically not another rule, but remember that they must take either the forms A, E, I, or O. And I've commented on student papers that if, you, uh, if you're not using the proper linking verb copula, you have to rephrase it to put it into standard form. You have to rephrase it. Anyway, the next rules I'm going to be talking about are uh, called distribution rules. Now, long story short, a term distributes if all members of that class are being referred to. A term distributes if all members of that class or category of things are being referred to. First, the middle term must distribute the middle term must distribute in one of the premises if it does not distribute it commits what is called the formal fallacy of undistributed middle term. I'll write this down. If it fails to distribute, it commits the fallacy. Well, I'll be more clear about it. It commits the formal fallacy of what's called the undistributed middle term. I'll show you some examples of that shortly. Oh, apologies. Oh, I, I just made the comment that if the middle term fails to distribute, it commits the fallacy of undistributed middle term. If it fails to distribute in one of the premises, it commits the fallacy of an undistributed middle term. Next, this is the second of the two rules <coughs> dealing with distribution.
if a term distributes in the conclusion, or put another way, if it's a distributed term that's in the conclusion, then it must distribute in its corresponding premise. If a term distributes in the conclusion, it must distribute in its corresponding premise. Now the last rule I'm going to talk about, before I go on to talk about distribution, what might be referred to as the negation rule. And I'll state it slowly, then I'll write it down. The premises will contain the same number of negations as we find in the conclusion. Now you notice the conclusion is only one premise, so it can only be a negation or an affirmation. So by inference, if we have two premises that are negations, our syllogism will automatically be invalid. Our syllogism will automatically be invalid if both of the premises are negations. Now, if the conclusion is a negation, we know that one of its premises must be a negation too. And if our conclusion is an affirmation, guess what both of our premises have to be? Affirmations. Now you notice, knowing this negation rule, you can narrow out the lion's share of the possible syllogism as invalid. So unsurprisingly, I'm not likely to give you a double negation as a test question. Because you'll know right off the bat that it's invalid without having to do any kind of work. You can say, For, forget the diagram, Jack. I know this one's invalid because of the negation rule's broken. Now let me write this down. The negation rule is like this. The premises must contain the same number of negation premises as found in the conclusion so for example if somebody says there is an an e e e uh, syllogism you automatically know that it's it's invalid because two of the premises are negations. If the premises are OO, you automatically know that it's invalid without having to do any more of the, of the labor on it. EO or OE, they're automatically invalid. AAE is invalid because we have a negation as the conclusion but two affirmations. Remembering these rules is a pretty quick and simple way of determining whether or not a syllogism is valid or invalid with great ease. It's also a way of checking your work because if the syllogism breaks any of these rules but somehow your diagram has yielded valid you probably either made a mistake in your diagram, or as sometimes <laughs> students are wont to do, occasionally, and this bums me out, when they ace the diagram and then they misinterpret it. When they ace the diagram, but then they read the diagram wrong. That sometimes happens. Now one more thing about these rules. Some, one more rule can actually be gleaned from this, and that is, if your, both of your premises are particulars, that your syllogism will automatically be invalid. 
I can know this right off the bat because if both of my premises are particulars, it's going to end up breaking one of these other rules. Something won't be distributed. Some lists actually break that down into a separate rule. Many lists do not, mainly because it's implied by the other ones. And you can figure it out on your own. In a moment, we will go on to discuss what we mean by distribution. Cheers.